Hello, yes. Nothing great has been accomplished in history without fanaticism. Leon Trotsky. I'm reading an excellent book there by Jewish author Joshua Rubenstein on the life and times of Jewish revolutionary Leon Trotsky. If ever you're going to read books uh, about Jewish revolutionaries, make sure the author's always a Jewish one because they're a bit more open and honest and at times let the cat out of the bag, but that's another video on itself. Uh, but the book's a good read. I'm enjoying reading it. But also, this brings me uh, to our movement, the white nationalist movement, the world over. We don't even possess dedication, commitment, let alone fanaticism like our enemies. In fact, the complete opposite. We're involved in a reality TV show, a childish pantomime and circus, whether or not it's the Tommy Robinson Roadshow, or it's Luke Nash Jones bursting into some leftist bookshop, or it's the so-called white nationalist movement over in America. Um getting into fisticuffs with an irrelevant Antifa. Instead of, as I've said, being a pressure group on the hot on the heels of Donald Trump to deliver, they opted for a childish fight, confrontation with leftists, with Antifa at Charlottesville. That just made the white nationalist movement in America even more unsellable than it's ever been, right? And this is what is happening to our movement. It's been deliberately, deliberately turned into a reality TV show. You see, those over in America, uh, the so-called white nationalists like Richard Spencer, Nathan D'Amigo, uh, Matthew Heimbach, Angelo John Gage and many, many more. They all work for the Southern Poverty Law Centre and that's why the movement's been taken down a silly road of fisticuffs with Antifa and whatever and making it just so unsellable. In fact, scary, where people are just going to run a mile from the white nationalist movement in America unless real patriots take control of it and direct it where it needs to go. And the same can be said here, like I've said, Tommy Robinson, Luke Nash Jones, Britain First, National Action, our enemies are controlling these outfits and they've created a childish pantomime and circus. You see, we need to get back in there into white communities uh, in Britain where we can still win council seats. There's dozens, if not hundreds of them, where we can, especially now. And like Nick Griffin said, we've got to take over communities. Well, you're quite right, Nick, and how you do that is being their councillor. You're now in charge. You're now the representative of that community, right? Now, you may indeed be right where it's too late for Britain. We can't do nothing for Britain now. It's too late. We're going to be Islamified and destroyed. You may be right. But the nonsense you're coming out with, this reconquista, where racially aware whites marry other racially aware whites, have children, homeschool them, shield them from the liberal poison. They grow up. They then in turn... Uh, meet, marry, racially aware whites and they have kids and so on and so on for about another hundred years and there'll be enough racially aware whites then to uh, take back our lands from Muslim conquest. It's that stupid, only you could come up with something stupid like that but I mean you may be right like I've said it may be too late for Britain but that what you're proposing is just ludicrous. But like I've said many times before, no one knows what's going to happen the world over. So before it does, let's get ready so we're in a position where we can at least try and do something. We can't just all give in and give up and wait for this 100-year reconquista to take back our lands, right? Or all sit on Facebook watching the Tommy Robinson Roadshow or the Luke Nash Jones Roadshow or whatever. We've got to do something. And the way to do it is to get back in there like I'm doing here in Kensington and Liverpool. I was leafleting in Kensington Liverpool the other day. And I was talking to locals again. And once again, I learned an awful lot. I know what's pissing them off. I know what they want addressing. And I'm going to uh, address all that in my next leaflet. But this is only through going in that community and talking to them. Not sitting on the internet. Also, I spoke about Nick Griffin being on a YouTube channel uh, the, other, the other week or whatever. Myth of the 20th century. But I failed to have a look at the lineup of some of their videos. And when I did, Christ, you know, they're probably another spy satellite YouTube channel on the internet like Red Ice Radio or Renegade Broadcasting. Or the History Club, which is no good either. They have videos such as, or they've made videos such as uh, the Hollywood 10. Remember them? It was 1947, 10. Hollywood screenwriters were blacklisted. Uh, there's one on Leo Frank, and you'd even believe that. 
Uh, there's ones on uh, the Cambridge Spies, Rhodesia, Pinochet, Spanish Civil War, ad nauseum. What in the world? Uh, how, how are they supposed to be relevant today, which you proclaim they are? Where I'm campaigning here in Kensington, Liverpool, but could be anywhere in the world. Right, I'm campaigning on getting the bins emptied on time. Opposing more third world as being dumped in Kensington, who are dumping rubbish everywhere, which in turn has caused the plague of rats. What are, what's videos on the Cambridge Spies got to do with that? Well, exactly. We've got to get the commitment, dedication and fanaticism back into our movement. Or oh, we are really going to lose. Our enemies are going to run rings around us. They're full of fanaticism. They don't push the Tommy Robinson Roadshow, Luke Nash Jones or Fisty Cup uh, at Charlottesville, right? They're out there reaching the people they want and the, the, the winning, the being successful and we're being left behind and it's deliberate. It's not an accident all this. So come on, let's for, set aside all the excuses, all the cop-outs and let's get back in there like we once were. Okay, thanks.